tonight on CI. The H1N1 virus, what you need to know, and will there be enough vaccine for everyone who needs it? And with the death of a Cornell University student, what are college campuses doing to prevent the disease from spreading? Welcome to Central Issues. I'm George Kilpatrick on this Friday night. Tonight, an in-depth conversation about the H1N1 virus. Dr. Cynthia Morrow will be dropping by. Also, we'll tell you what Syracuse University and Lemoyne College are telling their students to do to be healthy. In Onondaga County, there have been four confirmed deaths related to the H1N1 virus. It seems like basic hygiene and common sense about things like washing your hands and how to sneeze properly, that's not the way, we'll show you how to do it properly, must be taught again. Now, we'll review the steps being taken in Onondaga County, for example, to get the vaccine to those who need it most, review safety precautions and what your school, business, daycare, and you should be doing to stay healthy this fall. Joining us now is Dr. Cynthia Morrow. She's the Onondaga County Commissioner of Public Health. Welcome. Thanks, George. I think the most incredible thing here is that New York State does not offer a test for the H1N1 virus. Right. At, at this point, um, pretty much all influenza activity, if, if someone goes and has a rapid test, if it's, if it's A, it's, it's going to be a novel H1N1. Um, across the country, 99% of the flu A's are H1N1, so there really isn't necessarily a point in testing. The challenge is that that rapid test isn't really a good test, so if, you, if it's not positive, it doesn't mean you don't have influenza, it just means that um, we haven't confirmed that. And so people need to assume that if they have influenza-like illness, and that means fever with a sore throat or cough, um, that they probably have, have the flu, and if they do have the flu, it's probably the novel virus. And you, now you're calling it the novel. We went from swine flu to novel virus to H1N1. What is, what is, why the difference? Well, it, it's confusing. There's a very long name associated with it. We got away from the term swine flu because people Peter in different was mad, right? <laughs> yeah, Peter, <laughs> Peter was mad. But in, in different cultures, um, it was affecting the swine industry and, and pigs were being slaughtered and it has nothing to do with pigs and so they, they really wanted to get away from the idea that this was a swine flu. It's a human influenza. We get away from simply using H1N1 because there's a normal seasonal flu that has the same name as well. So that's why we are calling it either 2009 H1N1 or new H1N1 or novel H1N1. All right, so let's talk about normal flu season. Is this a different flu than what we would normally see, and if so, when we talk about flu shots, do you have to get different shots for different Absolutely. strains? Okay. Absolutely. So, so this time last year, we didn't know that this particular H1N1 existed. None of us knew about it. We, none of us have any immunity to it. That's mm -hmm. why it's called a new virus, or in, in June, the, the World Health Organization called this a pandemic because it's a new virus that spread rapidly across the globe. Um, and, and people, I just want to say, people don't shouldn't be confused by the word pandemic. They think epidemic, but we're really talking pandemic as a definition is just a new strain. It's a new strain that spreads globally. S spreads globally. Right, okay. exactly. So in this case, seasonal flu, there are lots of different seasonal flu viruses. Um, this time next year, this will be just part of the seasonal flu by, by all probability. So, but, but this year, because none of us has immunity towards it and because it's a new virus, um, we do have to have a, a new vaccine for it. We didn't have this virus around when they made this year's vaccine. And so that's why, unfortunately, we're going to have to have two shots. And this, vac this virus has been around for most of the summer, which is very different very than different. anything else we've seen. Right. If, if you look at what we call the epi curve, the, the curve of disease activity, we have the traditional curve in February and March, and then there's a small blip in uh, May and June, and that's where in Onondaga County we started seeing a lot more flu cases. Then it's kind of quiet for July and August. Unfortunately, um, in the last couple of weeks across the country, flu activity has really gone up dramatically. We've seen, you know, the outbreak on Cornell. I mean, they have reported uh, 600 people going through their uh, health clinic and, you know, we'll, we'll hear from some of the other colleges and universities. Right. Uh, this is a big deal in the schools back in session. Uh, were there any new guidelines given to schools, for example, elementary, uh, K through 12, uh, that they ought to do in order to make sure that we're safe? 
there, there were there have been guidelines issued you know, numerous times over the last several months. Right. And yes, there are new guidelines for schools that were released um, a few weeks ago. There are guidelines for colleges and universities. Um, the important thing different to... Different sets for different... Yes. Why? Um, a lot of the guidelines are the same basic things that, that you talked about. Right. Um, proper hand hygiene, proper respiratory hygiene, how to cough, how to... Uh, cover your sneeze. All right, let's do that because there was a, there was a big thing with right. a reporter who sneezed at a press conference, mm -hmm. and most people, you know, do this wrong. That's this is correct. not how you cover your mouth. Even though this is how some. What's the correct way? Show me. Okay, put your. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to. The, the idea here is, right. you know, okay. if you happen to be at a sink where there's soap and running water, and you can immediately wash your hands. Right. So this, what's happening is the, people are sneezing, the, they're going they go like, like this, this achoo, right. and, then, and they forget. They forget, and then they, you know, they shake your hand, you rub your eye, your nose, your mouth, and you now have been exposed to All right, this is why we want to keep virus. lots of this stuff around. Mm -hmm. Is this effective, these antibacterials? Yes, it is. We put our hands on it, we do this sure. after, and that's just why, this is everywhere. This is, so you should, ha everybody should have this stuff, right? Right, and I think it's important to balance it. You know, having access to a sink and soap is, is good, too. They, they aren't mutually exclusive. If you have access to a sink and soap and you have that good friction going on for, you know, two happy birthdays, that, that's really the ideal situation. This is the great situation. What if you, you don't mean have is access. that if you're washing happy, but you can't sing it because then we'll have to pay. But anyway, right. <laughs> but right. I get you, I get right. you.